How's it going guys? We have a very difficult question for biochemistry for step one. However, the association with pharmacology exceedingly high yield. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. I'm man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. And I'll start the clip. So 48-year-old man, he is currently taking tuberculosis prophylaxis following a positive PPD test four months ago. He occasionally mentions paresthesias of his left hand. Physical exam shows no abnormalities. Question wants to know the impairment of which the following is most likely to be seen as patient. So for starters, you should know that TB prophylaxis is going to be isoniazid for nine months plus vitamin B6. Okay, so if a patient has a positive PPD, a lot we can talk about, okay? But if a patient has a positive PPD test and then a negative chest x-ray, that's latent TB. We want to treat for latent TB, a.k.a. we give TB prophylaxis. As I just fucking said, isoniazid for nine months plus vitamin B6 is what the U.S. simile wants. There are alternative regimens. Some students get pedantic, but INH for nine months plus B6. If a patient has a positive chest x-ray, we treat for active TB, which usually is going to be ripe. Rifamp and isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol for two months, followed by RI alone for four more months. So six months total, plus B6 throughout. And the reason we give B6, pyridoxine, okay, don't confuse with pyrazinamide, part of ripe. It's annoying that they happen to be similar that way sounding. Uh, but pyridoxine, the reason we give B6 uh, with TB treatments is because isoniazid causes vitamin B6 deficiency, okay? So that is past level. And oftentimes the NBME, they might just want B6 deficiency, okay? Extremely easy question. You need to know that isoniazid does that, which can present as neuropathy. And it's miscellaneous neuropathy. It can be paresthesias, numbness, even seizure, rarely, okay? So question wants to know what's going to be impaired if we have B6 deficiency. That's why this is a more challenging question. But I'm going to cut to the fucking chase, not waste our time, especially the fact that step one's pass fail now. Should I say acetyl CoA synthesis? Wrong fucking answer, okay? I mean, when we have, this would be B1 in theory, that would be the highest yield answer. When we have pyruvate dehydrogenase, which when we're moving from pyruvate end of the glycolytic cycle to the TCA cycle, we have pyruvate dehydrogenase, large complex, B1, B2, B3, B5, lipoic acid, okay? And does not involve B6. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, carboxylation of propionyl CoA, wrong answer. Carboxylation reactions are biotin, B7, okay? Non-existent yieldness on USMLA, okay, B7. Some students get fanatical about this notion of eating raw egg whites, how avidin within egg whites can cause biotin deficiency. I mean, it's it's fanciful uh, factoids we're dealing with, with non-existent yieldness on USMLA. So, Biotin, carboxylation of propionyl CoA to methylmalonyl CoA, uh, as well as propionyl CoA to mevalonyl CoA, I believe, as well as acetyl CoA to oxaloacetate. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, fumarate synthesis, wrong answer. This refers to uh, B2 deficiency. Okay, so riboflavin. In the TCA cycle, we have succinate goes to fumarate via succinate dehydrogenase, and we also make, we convert FAD to FADH2. Once again, nonsense, especially since we have a pass-fail step one. Okay, back in the day when we were trying to get a 280, when I took step one a decade ago, trying to get a 280 on step one, I mean, yes, uh, we were gunner and we uh, focused on details like that. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, hepatic transamination is the correct answer. So one thing you could be aware of is that vitamin B6 is a cofactor for the transaminase reactions. ALT, AST, okay, those enzymes uh, require B6 as a cofactor. B6, also high yield. I'd say the highest yield factoid regarding B6, apart from that isoniazid causes deficiency of it, and that presents as neuropathy, is that it's B6 is a cofactor for the first step of heme synthesis, okay? So succinyl CoA plus glycine via delta ALA synthase, delta amino levulinic acid synthase, and vitamin B6 goes to delta ALA. That reaction, fucking high yield for the heme component, okay? Uh, B6 also has other 
uh, uses, but they're not really assessed, like histidine decarboxylase or glutamic acid decarboxylase. Like, US simply doesn't give a fuck. Okay, so I would say uh, knowing it's for heme synthesis. Okay, the transaminases, yes, as in this question, difficult question, as I said, but transaminases, uh, sorry, heme synthesis and isoniazid deficiency cause of B6 deficiency is what you need to know. Tetrahydrofolate tetra synthesis, wrong answer. So it's just the folate pathway. You could be aware that dihydrofolate reductase, if US simile wants to know uh, drugs interfere with folate uh, synthesis, then, or the folate pathway, then uh, we're talking about methotrexate, okay, as well as trimethoprim and pyrimethamine. I would say you should just know methotrexate, okay, is a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor. Trimethoprim and pyrimethamine, lower yield, okay, in that regard. Uh, but methotrexate, first line DMARD for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, it's also used orally for psoriasis if patient fails topicals. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.